strongly perceive in my spirit, this is going to be the World Fair we are going to have the most results. No, I'm, I'm not saying it. No, wait, now. Nah, I'm not saying it as a prophetic declaration. I'm, I'm making a statement of fact, all right? That we are going to have tangible, real. Are uh, you from I'm saying? I, I, when should I just said, yeah, yeah, this is it. All right. Thank you very much for that message. Amen. So you may all be seated. And for our final session this evening, I'd like to bring up a man I respect very, very, very much in this um, country. He's a very, not just balanced, he's a mature minister of the gospel of Jesus. You can see someone whom the word of God has been processed on the inside, real tangible. You know, it's like uh, wine that has not, well, don't let say wine, since wine is alcohol, but it's like it has matured, the word of God has matured on the inside of him, very balanced and accurate in his operations. Let's rise to our feet as a welcome Dr. Obwele. Good evening, everyone. First of all, please join me to say thank you, Matu Pastor Kechi. I don't know how to say I I lack words to express my gratitude. And I'm so glad I did not miss that message. Because I won't miss any, any session. I'm, when I go now, I have to sit to, hey, good evening. Did I miss your ministration? Oh my God. First lady, I honor you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm Pastor Poju. You have a brother here and a friend. You have a brother beyond preaching, beyond all of this. You have a brother here. Um, brothers are born for the day of adversity. It's when they come, you know who is who. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you for the word. Thank you for what we just heard. Thank you. You have made my job easy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Unlock the faith of your people and bring them into that place so that everyone that is sick, that is afflicted, let this night be the night for them. Let this night be that night. I believe you for 100% healings here tonight. And for those that are watching around the world, that every one of them will step into their inheritance. We give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You may be seated. With what has just happened here, my job is so easy. I'm going to be praying for the sick in a couple of minutes. If you're sick, if you've been harassed, this night is your night. Because grace makes the provision and faith makes the appropriation. Faith is just how to cash the check, how to withdraw the money from the bank. Grace has provided everything that we need. Galatians chapter 3, let me read a few verses there. So I'm going to explain just shortly how to unlock the faith of others. And the reason I'm doing it, so I'm talking to two groups. Those of us who want to have more result in healing ministry, you will see one or two things that can make it easier for you. And then those of us who need healing, um, it becomes easy to take it. Okay, Galatians chapter 3, please, you know, from verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. One of my secrets for healing ministry is making the cross real to people. Paul said, I taught the cross so much that in Galatia, it was as if they were there when Jesus died. Then look at verse 2. 
This only will I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Healing comes to us the same way we receive salvation. Because healing and salvation are part of the provisions of the cross. Actually, there are other things, but uh, like a wise man said, the front of the cross is salvation. You know, his hands were pierced, his feet were pierced, his side was pierced for the remission of our sin. But the back of the cross, where his back was bruised, is for our healing. With one death, he paid for our sins and paid for our sicknesses. So, if you know how to lead people to Christ, you also know how to heal the sick. Actually, healing is easier than salvation. Healing is easier than salvation because one is the mother, the other is the child. Sin is the parent, sickness is the offspring. So if you can handle the parent, then you can handle her babies. Sin is actually the tree. Sickness is a fruit that grows out of that. So with the same debt, he took care of both the tree and the consequences that came out of it. He took care of our sins and then all the other stuff that came out of it. I'm just limiting it to sickness now because that's my assignment tonight. But you can expand it to all the other provisions of the cross. Um, hmm. Jesus once said, which one is easier? To say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, rise up, take up your bed, and walk. He was dealing with a crippled man. <laughs> he said, thy sins be forgiven thee. And those, you know, Pharisees got angry and they began to, he said, which one is easier? Healing comes with remission of sin. Healing goes with salvation. So you know how to deal with sin when you are leading people to Christ. Do you tell them to do penance for how many days? To, you know, like our Catholic friends did for me in those days. Do you tell them that? Do you tell them to pay for their sins? Do you tell them they have to fast for a number of days before they can get their sins forgiven? No, the price has been paid. The cross took care of all of that. Now salvation is on the basis of grace, but it's assessed by faith. It's the same way that you minister healing to people. And if you are the one that needs help tonight, I want you to know that it's paid for. It's paid for. You don't have to earn it. Jesus earned it for you. You think God can't heal me because I'm bad. Yes, he went to the cross for that reason. He went to the cross to pay for your sins. He bore the consequences of your sins. He bore not only your sins, but the consequences of it. He took your place in judgment. He was beaten. He was bruised so that you might be set free. Anyway, there is a, an important element here so I can leave Galatians 3 alone. Please back to that verse too. So, whether it is Holy Spirit baptism that you want, you receive it not by the works of the law, but by the hearing of faith. Whether it is healing that you want, you receive it not by the works of the law, but by the hearing of faith. Nothing unlocks people's faith like revelation of the cross. I have seven tools for unlocking people's faith. I will show you one or two in a few minutes. And, 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 and this is the only difficult job in healing, ministering healing to people. Many a time when we see the person that is sick, we are looking at that leg that is crippled or the eyes that is blind or looking at this, the symptoms of their sickness. No, the real thing he, holding people from receiving healing is inside, not outside. So what you must learn is how to remove those roadblocks that are inside. 
You remember the first night Pastor Poju was preaching, he was talking about that there are two mountains, the one without and the one within. The one within is the one you roll away and the one without collapses. Is doubt, is unbelief, is uh, sin consciousness, is a sense of worthiness, is feeling that God doesn't even love me. Those are the things you need to tackle. A wise man who wants to help people just destroys those things by what you preach. And the miracle just breaks loose anyhow, just like you see in a few minutes. Um, um, Galatians 3, one more time. I just want to, uh, just verse 3, and I'll leave it. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, you are now made perfect by the flesh? Verse 4. Have you suffered so many things in vain? Okay, verse 5. He that ministered the spirit to you, whether it is you that want to receive it, or the person that ministers it. And the next one is the one that works miracle among you. Or you that want the miracle for yourself. Do it he that by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. He's letting you know it's not by the works of the law. These are provisions of grace. Healing, salvation, Holy Spirit baptism, deliverance, all of them. Prosperity. The reason I cannot be poor is because he was made poor for my sake that I might be made rich. You see? So there is no way the cause of poverty can stand on me because I know that fact. The reason healing is easy is because he was made sick, he was bruised and afflicted that we might be made well. He took our place that we might take his place. The reason I'm righteous and I'm the righteousness of God is because he was made sin with my sins and yours also. He didn't just take my sins. He didn't just pay for my sins. He did all that. But he was made sin that I might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. The reason you can put me under the cross anymore, the reason I'm blessed is because the Son of God on the cross was made cause. That's what Galatians 3 verse 13 was trying to explain to us. Because the Bible said, cause is everyone that hangeth on that tree. He was made cause that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, upon me. And then, having paid and gone through all these sufferings for our sake, it becomes illegal for Satan to keep tormenting the one that Jesus has set free. You know what it means? There are two ways to get a product. You either work hard, get enough money to buy it. But if you are there now, you know, for example, now I decided this is 2024, and I tried to maybe ask first lady, what's, what's one thing that Pastor Poju is trying to believe God for this year? Something on a personal level. And he, she mentions a car, a particular brand of car. And then I decide to greet him on his birthday with that brand. He didn't work for it. It's a gift. And I said, let me take you out somewhere. Take, for example, the days, you know, a Mercedes brand, latest brand. I will go to Mercedes car shop somewhere in the island. And then I said, sir, I learned that you like this car. He said, yes. Pastor David, how did you know? I said, let's leave that one. It's already paid for. It's now yours. Because I've gone ahead, 
paid for it, sorted out all the documents, all is for him to now take the car and go. Will it be right after I have taken all the pain to pay for the product for the company to ask him to pay a second time? Now you see that's what is going on now. That sickness is illegal. You see that poverty is illegal. You see, he has paid for it. There is no need to pay for it a second time. That is now cheating. Actually, let me now tell you something. Okay, 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 okay. This helps you to now know the source of sickness, even though it's well as established in the scripture. Sickness is satanic oppression. Even before the cross, it did not come from God. How much more after the cross? When Jesus came, the Bible said in Acts chapter 10, 38, he said he went about doing good and healing all that were what? Oppressed of the devil. And the word I want you to take note of is the word all. Everybody Jesus healed was under satanic oppression. Not one person was out. There was not one person that he met. He said, this one is God trying to teach you something. So I want you to know, he healed, about, uh, he healed thousands of people. Maybe I should show you one scripture. You know, um, can I find the John 21 verse 25? Please show them that scripture. Because this, this scripture helps me. That's what follows me since I understood it. I understood that God is not bothered about healing one million people in one night. So it, be, it became easy for me to just see multiply thousands of people healed within minutes. Look at what, what he said there. There are so many other things. He's talking about miracles which Jesus did. Here now he just did a miracle to provide for the disciples. The miracle of, of fish. Yeah, this second time he was doing that for them. He said there were so many other things, miracles, which Jesus did, which if they were to be written, everyone, I suppose that even the whole world itself could not contain the books that should be written. So if you are to document the miracles of Christ and he's in for only three and a half years old, for only three and a half years. If you are to document all the miracles that he did and his interventions in human affairs, you don't have enough space on the world to keep the documents. We have to keep building libraries everywhere. So what the Bible said, it just took, when they come to blindness, maybe they take three and just put in the record for us. They come to cripples, they might take two. They come to this, they take. They come to raising the dead, they took about three. They took a young girl. Then they took the only child of a widow and they took Lazarus. They were not. He raised. In our ministry, we've seen 13 people raised from the dead. Just this end of the year, two more people were added. And this after I traveled so much. Oh, end of last year. I traveled so much last year that the last program I did to end the year was a crusade. But by that time, I was already tired. I, I, I just wish that there is a way to cancel. I was just tired. I needed to take Pastor Sarah escape somewhere. We had booked where we were going for Christmas. I was saying, God, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything. Just get us through this last one. I was already tired. Two people. Do you know how one was raised from the dead? It was a baby. The baby died. The lady was in Jaws. And this death happened in hospital. It went and the baby died. And the doctors confirmed the baby dead. And then they did all those things, covered the baby. They were talking about calling her husband to come and remove this child. A lot of the miracles of resurrection is usually women. Yes, women. We, the men, will say, don't worry, we'll try again. But the woman that carried that child for nine months and then had been nurturing this child, this particular one was about two years old, and then you just say, start all over again. Do you know what it takes to carry a baby for nine months? Do you know what it takes to go through that thing in the maternity? And then, of course, when she started crying and making demand, 
according to her, I came in with a pastor that is in Port Harcourt. We call him PCJ. She actually, she said she was not sleeping. She said, you know, that we just walked in. I told PCJ, pick up the child. And brrr, spoke to the child. The baby got up and started breathing. And when she started screaming, everybody came out. They came to arrest her, thinking that she has gone mad. He said, can't you people see Pastor David and this man? And then we, we left that place. I know it was not me. I was not even praying in my house because I asked her questions. I was not even in a spiritual state. Of course, if I tell you what I was doing, you will not believe it. Because I was watching real entertainment on TV. But you see, I had to explain to the people the different provisions God has made. And one of them is the ministry of angels. And the angels, the Bible said, when Jesus finished that fast and began his ministry, angels came and ministered to him. That's why he could say, that man said, I don't need to, I don't need to come to my house. Speak the word only. And he said, go, be it to, to you according to your faith. By the time the man got to the house, the sick person at home has been healed. Angels, ministry of angels. The spoken word is backed by the ministry of angels. The spoken word, if you want to have further confidence, because there are seven pillars of unshakable faith. She just taught us one of them. You know, if we go into, for example, now, blood covenant realities and what you see another one. If you get a revelation of your righteousness in Christ. You see another one. Because that is the one that will destroy all your sin consciousness and all these things that inhibit you. If you get a revelation of your identity, who you are in Christ, who he has made us in him, you see another one. These things are the things that elevate you to the point that nothing means anything. These are the things we soaked on, we fed on, we meditated on, and he moved us out of that defeated boy so informations like that reach me. What I do is I only speak a word and turn back and continue what I'm doing. Why? Because we are backed by heavy detachment of angels. That's what it is. He said, are they not ministering spirit? Send forth to minister for them who shall be what? Heirs of salvation. You have access to those resources. You know, Pastor Poju, I was <laughs> traveling for a program. And there's a pastor in Lagos. He's one of my, you know, one of my spiritual sons. He has a ministry here in Lagos. I was in another state, and I, I had an event. And a woman died in their church. The husband is a Muslim. She was also a Muslim, but she gave her life to Christ. And she has been going through a lot of persecution. So, and in Islam, they don't waste time. It's Within 24 hours, they buried you. So the pastor went in the morning. Because of what the issue of our cousins, he decided to step up to raise the woman from the dead. So he prayed for morning. Around 12 noon, the woman was still there. So the people started disturbing. They want to bury. And he spoke so boldly about Christ, convincing her that the woman will rise. So 12 noon, I started getting this call that will not stop. I will put it off because then he started firing me messages. So I read, oh, it was a case of a dead man. I said, in my mind, what is my business with death? Bury the person. I think somewhere in the Bible there must be bury the dead. <laughs> I've not seen it, but I'm sure. I've seen raise the dead, but I'm sure there must also be. Don't 
don't disturb me. And I was traveling for a program. So I switched up my phone. My idea is, when I will reopen it, they must have buried the person. <laughs> so he kept firing. Of course, he couldn't get me again. I went for the program, got their preach, finish. I needed to send a message. I opened my phone, his call. I put, put off the call again. <laughs> but, but in the, this is around 4.15 in the evening. I said, this man is crazy. So I, I put off the call to do my own message. Then I saw one of his messages. Please, sir, the name of Christ is at stake because she's, she came from an east, and the Muslims have gathered for funeral. Uh, that one got my attention. That's the only thing that got my attention. He said, we've been here since morning. I don't even have, know how to escape out of this place. <laughs> and the husband has been on me to get out of here before so that they can bury the woman. Oh, that one got, got me. Because I know that God loves people. And he loves sinners. And he likes to reach them. So I said, Lord, short prayer. I just finished preaching. I was tired though. I said, Lord... This situation is, is somehow. Please do something. Help this pastor. I was telling God to do something. And, and, and that's one problem I always have with heaven. When I tell God to do something, he will tell me to do something. I was begging him, please, because of his holy name, and I brought up that particular issue. I say, your holy name, please. He said, you speak to the woman and raise her from the dead. I said, eh, Lord, please. Just do this one for your name's sake. He said, so I was in a different state. So I now made a call to, and he peeked. He said, he's shouting that I, you know. I said, calm down. Are you still in that place? He said, yes, sir. <laughs> I didn't know how to live here. I said, okay. Tell everybody where the woman is lying to leave. Only the husband. Maybe if she has a daughter... Bring only two close family people so that there will be a witness. Tell everybody, drive everybody out. Of course, he, don't, he, don't, he begged the husband to do the driving. He said, that's how Jesus operates. <laughs> and I told him, when doctors are doing operation, they don't allow people inside. Tell them, we all leave. So the husband drove everybody out. He said, you pastor. And then they stood in. So I told him, put your phone on loudspeaker. So I want the man to hear in whose name I pray and to hear what I said. So he put the phone on loudspeaker. I said, put it in the ear. I said, what's her name? They gave me the woman. I said, put it in the ear of the woman. You see what we're teaching in the morning about Rema? Once you have it, you pray and there is a quickening word to you. Because that's what faith is built on. It's no logos. It's not because I read in the Bible that Jesus raised the dead. No. So I called her name in the name of Jesus Christ and commanded death to release her and for her to return. And, you know, it's in the name of the man, the one who is the resurrection and the dead. So you know what happened? When I finished praying, there was quietness everywhere. Nothing coming from that side, nothing from my side. <laughs> yeah. Then the pastor broke the silence. He obviously took the phone from the woman's ear and said, he said, DP, she's still dead. <laughs> I said before, uncle. The Bible does not call it receiving of miracles. It calls it walking, walking of miracles. That's what I told him. Didn't call it receiving of miracles. So I said, take a bottle. Do you find water? Water. Anywhere you can find water there. If you, do you come? I say yes. I said, pour it on her. She will wake up. 
they brought this kind of water, poured it on her. She sneezed and got up. So you see now what we're teaching in the morning, after the speaking, there is what? Corresponding action. So if you want to know why Elisha told that man, go dip yourself in water. Seven. It's not water that healed. His faith has been released, but they need a corresponding action. Or where Jesus spat and told the man, go and wash. And there was even a case where there was no healing yet. These people were lepers. And he told them, go to the priest, show yourself, offer the sacrifice. The Bible said, as they went. Everyone said, as they went. Once we pray now, do what you could not do before. You couldn't move that leg, start moving it. You could not bend, your waist have been start bending. You could not look, start looking at, get a book and start looking at what you could not read before. You could not. It is way at the point of action that manifestation happens. So if you notice as the rest see, after prayer, God said, I've heard, Moses, why are you crying to me? What's the next thing? He now said, tell the people to move forward. How can you be moving towards a water that has not divided? I thought you divided first, then we can move. Are you seeing where people are having problems? Divide it first, then we can move. Did you ever watch the case of Joshua and River Jordan? He told the priest to even carry the ark and step on the water. The water has not divided. Go ahead, start marching. They carry the ark and march. The Bible says, when their feet stepped on Jordan, the water parted and went back to the city of Adam. So if at the death, the raising of Lazarus from the dead, that moment Jesus gave instruction for action, roll the stones away and they refused. That's where the story will have ended. It's called walking of miracles. Not receiving of miracles. Everyone say walking. Some of us know how to operate all the other laws of until we get to this point. We stop. When you speak, the reality has been created. But when you act, the manifestation of course. And so when the woman got up, and now I said, I hope you know what to do. He said, uh, um, I said, I, I said, God has organized a crusade for you. Step into it. Take her out now. Everybody has gathered for funeral. And do crusade and make altar call. It's a very simple thing. And he went ahead to do that. And nobody, they are our cousins. You know how radical they come. Nobody that challenged him. Because... The Bible said in, in John chapter 6, I think it's verse 2, great multitude followed him because they saw the miracles which he did on them that were diseased. So watch church history, watch present history. You want explosion, turn loose the laws of faith and the miracles. Miraculous will bring growth. Then wisdom can consolidate them. The word. That's where a lot of people who flow in the miracle make mistake. <laughs> and if you don't teach, one day you find yourself with your 12, just like Jesus. Actually, that day he was the only 11. After multitudes, if you don't teach like Moses, you do all the miracles and what one day is only two people going into the promised land. So the miraculous is the advertisement in the kingdom. 
is the, what pulls, then the word keeps. Um, okay. I want to do something first and then we'll pray. Among those internal issues that hinder people from receiving, you know, we have just had one major one cleaned up. There are about seven principal issues. But I want to tackle one. This one is a lot of people don't know if it is God's will to heal them. And faith cannot be exercised where the will of God is not known. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Actually, in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 8, there was a leper. You can put it up and follow me. A leper, a, a leprous man that came to Jesus and the, his prayer goes this way. Lord, if it be your way or if it is your way, you can make me clean. So the word you can means you have the ability. The problem is I don't know if you want to. If thou will, you can make me clean. A lot of people are there. They know God is powerful. They know he's omnipotent. They know he can do anything. They have even had testimonies of what he did for others. The problem is... So, um, in unlocking people's faith, you have to know how to remove all these crutches and, and breaks that hinder people from assessing God's provisions. <laughs> and Jesus turned to him to the man and said I will be thou cleans and of course the leprosy left but I met a group of people who think Jesus is the kind one the father is the mean one you see you see, you see how powerful what she was teaching this night was they think, okay, Jesus is the good guy. Maybe if he was actually here, he would have... He went about doing good. But the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, that Jesus is the express image of what? God the Father. Maybe I should make that clear. Jesus is the express image of God the Father. Actually, the implication of that is that Jesus was the will of God in action. Anything you see Jesus do, that's exactly what the Father does. So, does the Father want everybody healed? Do you remember when he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt? The Bible said in Psalm 105 that that night they ate the Passover he healed all, he healed them all. This Old Testament, because the scripture said there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Not one sick person. Jesus is the one that manufactured it. No, he got it from the Father. It's the heart of the Father that he came to show us. Actually, let me, let me make it a little more serious. In John chapter 6, verse 38, I want to show you something. This is what Jesus said. I came from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. So you see, he went about healing all these people. They said the whole world cannot even contain the testimonies. You see how unlimited the healing power of God flowed through his ministry. That's exactly the will of the Father. Where is that John say? No, no, no. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, John 6, 38. I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. At verse 39. And this is the will of him that sent me, that of all which he has given me, I, I should lose none, but should raise it up on the last day. Healing is part of it. Resurrection is part of it. Raising the dead is part of it. Let me show you another one. Hmm. This is John 8.29. Show it. He that sent me is with me. 
The Father had not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. So the man was going about doing good, healing people. He said, those are the things that please the Father. What pleases the Father is to see you well. What makes him glad is to see you here. So you see, if you watch the last message and what I'm trying to explain to you, there are lies that the enemy tells people and those lies are actually the barrier. What is creating the barrier between people and the provisions that God has made. What, this is one of the things I tackle. For example, I'm talking about how to unlock people's faith. First John chapter five, verse 14. The Bible said, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So, prayer, the prayer that works is first based on the knowledge of God's will. The reason I have impeccable confidence when I minister to the sick is that I have, you know, confidence, assurance beyond doubt that God actually wants people well. You need to know that beyond every reasonable doubt. God actually wants you well. God is not the one putting sickness on you. It's Satan that did that. There was a woman that was bowed over, a form of para, you know, a form of paralysis. She can't even lift her head. I've seen people like that. And Jesus saw her and said, daughter, you are loose for your infirmity. And some people were complaining, you know. <laughs> So he said, ought not this daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 13 years, be loose on the Sabbath day? Why should she, should she, she be made to wait one more day? Those guys were saying, this is Sabbath day. That's not the day for healing. Who told you that? It's, Jesus said, it was Satan that bound her for 13 years. The slave master, the tax master is the devil. Our God is a good God. <laughs> Exodus chapter 3. Maybe I can wind down from there. Exodus chapter 3. Um, verse 9. Yeah. Okay, let's start from verse 7. I want you to see. This is the children of Israel in bondage, suffering in Egypt. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the afflictions of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their tax masters. For I know their souls. God hurts when people hurt. He's not the one causing the problem. He's Satan. Here is Pharaoh and his people. I've seen their sorrows. I know their sorrows. Verse 8. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up to a land flowing with milk and honey. Then add verse 9. And therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come up to me. I have also seen the oppression. Where will the Egyptians have oppressed them? The question I want to ask, if you are hurting for your people, if you have seen what they are going through, why haven't you done anything? The gap now between God and answers to prayer is human beings. God works on a true man. That's why I want every one of you to rise up as part of your commitment for 2024 to be involved in the healing ministry. It's actually one of my assignments. We are hearing about false prophets and all that. Let's make the supernatural the normal thing again in the church. That's how we were raised in secondary school, in the university. That's where we started all this. We took it at another level by the time we were on campus. And by the time we came out, it wasn't a big deal anymore. So if you check verse 10, he now told Moses, get up, I'm sending you. So it's just 
between heaven and the needs of the people is human beings, men. God needs men. God walks through men. And I want to end this way. Jesus, I have up to 12 scriptures. Everywhere Jesus went, he healed them all. Everywhere he went, he healed them all. If you look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 24, 25, 23, 24, 25, he said he went about villages and everywhere preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease. What, what it was the word? This one said, is verse 23 first. 23. And teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sicknesses and all, look at the word all, 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 all manner of diseases. Look at chapter 8, verse 16, fast, please. Everywhere he healed them all. 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 When the evening was come, they brought to him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his word and healed all. Why is it that he didn't see one person that it was God's will for that person to be suffering? Why didn't he see one person that God didn't want to heal? Why was he healing all? And then Matthew 10, you know, chapter 10, verse 1. He said he, gave, he called his disciples, gave them power against all unclean spirits and to cast them out and to heal how many? To heal how many? All manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. I read Acts chapter 5 under Peter's ministry. He said they brought people that were sick, people that were crippled, people that were possessed with demons, and they were all healed. There came multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing the sick folks and those that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. How many? Everyone. So the will of God is for everybody to be healed. Jesus is the will of God in oppression. He did it in his ministry, and that's what I believe, and that's what I see. I'm not saying that in every meeting I hold that everybody, you know, but what hinders the ones that are not healed is whether we're able to help them see these issues. The moment people begin to understand that, their faith explodes and they're able to take what belongs to them. Finally, there are two keys when it comes to activating people's faith. Hold this for me. And I want to end with this. I'm going to pray in a minute. When it comes to helping others, one of them is to seed them with the word because faith comes by what? Hearing. But faith also comes by seeing. You see, it's not only through the ear gate, but also the eye gate. And so there are sometimes God wants you to get certain examples, just make some demonstrations, and then you can use it to unlock the remaining. Okay, let me put it another way. It's not just hearing the word. A lot of people get healed, not because they had time to listen to messages, but because what they had were testimonies of others. If you want to fast track the healing ministry in your healing ministry, when God heals only three people, celebrate it as if he healed 3,000, and then 3,000 will be healed. Pastor, the woman with the issue of blood did not hear any message. The Bible says it was when she heard of Jesus, what was happening in his ministry. That's how she knew that touching can, that power can flow through touching. A lot of people assume that if anointing is present, that gets the job done. You can even fall and rise and nothing has happened. It is that anointing combined with the faith of the people that produces the result. With all the anointing Jesus was carrying that day, the woman touched and virtue flowed into her. Jesus did not say, my anointing made thee well. What did, she, did he tell the woman? Your faith has made thee whole. So just like it takes a woman and a man to produce a child, it takes the egg and the sperm to fertilize that egg to create life. That's how the miraculous works. 
it takes the power of the Holy Spirit, but something from the man that is receiving that work. And then the miraculous happens. It's called faith. So that's why the preacher is the one that must see the people with the word. He must understand what he's dealing with. The issues you're dealing with is not the leg that's crippled. You're bothered about the leg. The issues you're dealing with are things that are inside. A sense of unworthiness, a sense of guilt and condemnation. You are dealing with, sometimes it's even unforgiveness. Other times you are dealing with things like, you know, God doesn't want to hear me. Other times you're dealing with a sense of rejection. They don't know that God truly loves them. And you just open the heart of God to the individual. They start crying, then they are healed. And if you are suffering, that's what the problem is. Do you know why this thing has lasted for years? It's not because God wants it. God is not the one keeping you from getting healed. God is the one who sacrificed his son on the cross for your salvation and for your deliverance. The problem is you don't know. You think he doesn't care about you. One girl told me that God doesn't even know that she exists, that God does not care about anything. And her state was so bad. And the Holy Spirit told me the two buttons to touch because at that moment I needed help. While she was talking, I was asking, please help me. Even though the theology in my head could not handle this one. And he told me, I just touched it. The girl broke and started crying. I didn't even have to scream. And she got healed. God loves you, my dear. God cares about you. You are his child. God hurts when you are hurting. He feels what you're going through. The Bible said every time he is moved with compassion and he healed the people. And you see that compassion that Jesus constantly demonstrated is the heart of the father. He is the express image of the father. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen my father. That's how the father feels about you. Wherever you are seated, if you're sick, just touch that part of your body. If you're crippled, touch your leg. If you're blind, touch your eyes. If you are deaf, you can't hear me. Can somebody who brought you or somebody around to help you put your hands on your ears? If you are deaf in one ear, touch that one. Just a point of contact. You will be can be healed even without touching. I just heard a word from heaven that hundreds of people have just received their healing even before the prayer. Just as you are hearing what we are saying. You spirit of infirmity, you tormenting devils, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, leave! Lose these people! You devil of paralysis, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, leave! You spirit of madness and mental illness, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, leave! You spirit of blindness, I rebuke you, leave! You spirit of deafness, you spirit of dumbness, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, leave! You devils that cause crippling disease, paralysis, stroke, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, leave! Hey, a couple of you are wondering if I included you. Wherever you are watching from around world, just touch your body. The angels have invaded your home. The healing power of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit has invaded your home. I rebuke you, that sickness, to leave you right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. That cancer of the throat just vanished right now. That cataract just vanished right now. I rebook every form of eye problem, short-sightedness, long-sightedness. Be gone in Jesus' mighty name. That injury in the arm, that injury, you're not able to lift your hand. Move that hand up right now, you are healed. You can bend your fingers, bend it right now, you are free. You can not lift up your hand, lift it. You can bend your elbow. Bend it right now. There is a woman, you are receiving a brand new hips. The angels are changing your hip bones. You have not been able to walk. Madam, in Jesus' mighty name, get up from that place and walk. Get up, get up, you are being healed. You are feeling the power of God on you. I rebook every form of disease and infirmity, heart problems, 
palpitation, I rebook it to leave. You have an organ failure. God has organ transplant. Touch that part of your body. Father, I ask for creative miracles. I ask for reparative miracles. I ask for brand new organs, brand new kidneys, brand new hearts, brand new pancreas, brand new eyes in the socket. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and just worship him and bless him. Bless him. Just thank him. Tell him I receive it. That's what you do with faith. You just take it. That blood problem, that problem, blood leukemia, I just rebook it. Live in the name of Jesus. That lady that has been bleeding, you've been bleeding for a long time. You just got healed. That bleeding has stopped. I rebook every form of growth, every form of cancer. Service cancer, breast cancer. Every type of cancer, I rebook it to live in Jesus' mighty name. You are healed, my friend. Do what you could not do before. You couldn't move, move. You couldn't do something, do. You couldn't swallow, swallow. Every person having blood pressure problem, blood sugar problem, internal organ problems, I declare you well. I declare you healed. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God. There's a young child that should be walking by now, but there is a paralyzing disease that has been on that child. All the kids of that age have since been walking and running around. Mother, that child is lying beside you. That your son has been healed. Pull the baby up, put the baby on the feet, and you see him move. Thank you, Jesus, the Son of God. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands and just thank him. Thank him. Thank him. I command healings this for this service, for this conference 2024 to flow around the world, every nation where people are watching, even when you replace, even when you replace, let the angels of God follow these words and bring healings to nations, healings to families, healings in churches, healings everywhere in Jesus' mighty name. I rebook the spirit of depression and suicide that wants to harm you, wants you to terminate your life. You devils, live in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Live. A second batch of mental illness and instability in the mind. A two set, but all had to do with the mind. You have been made whole right now in Jesus' mighty name. That devil lives. That person that is suffering from insomnia, your system, your brain has been restored. Your memory is back. There's a man that's watching. Sometimes you forget yourself. You don't even know where you are. You sit in your house, in your sitting room. You can't recognize your children and wife. God's hand just touched you. You are feeling it as I'm talking. Your brain is back. Your system is back. I rebook every infertility, every barrenness, every impotency. I command it to live in Jesus' mighty name. Just lift your hands and give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Just say, I receive it. It's mine. I receive it. I receive it. It's a gift of grace. Go ahead.
chorus. Just one minute. Please, everybody here, just believe God with me. We're going to hear a testimony of somebody being raised from the dead. You are believing God for that experience. I call for the life of your loved one in the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of life that raised Christ from the dead quicken that dead one right now. Come back to it and come back to your family. In Jesus' mighty name, the Son of God. How many of you know that something has happened to you? Let me see your hand. You see what I'm talking about? No, put your hands down. Let's be sure of what we're talking about. I mean healing or deliverance has happened to you and you know it. Let me see your hands. Ladies and gentlemen, you see what I'm talking about? It is not the sickness, it is the hindrances inside. I think one of these that me and you will do healing service. My God, thank you, man. Thank you again, and thank you. And thank you, Pastor Pojo, and thank you, First Lady, you know. Thank you, thank you. 